everybody. Morning, Al. We'll Morning. call the Morning. commission meeting to order the first two <laughs> items uh, under consent, secretary's minutes, and then also treasurer's report. If there are no adjustments to either one of those, I'd ask for one motion to approve both. I'll so make a motion. motion. <laughs> Motion's been made. I think I heard a second. <laughs> who seconded? Julie. I got, oh, who first then? Maybe Roger. Roger. Roger first. There, Roger. I have the motion on the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Great. There's no adjustments. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Aye. Minutes and treasures report has been approved. Do we need to do uh, a, a voice vote on minutes or just on the action items? Everything. 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 All right. Okay. Go ahead, Wendy. Right. Daryl Sanis. Aye. Sharon Arbreiter. Aye. Camille Capilla. Aye. Ann Norris. Aye. Julie Deschler. Aye. Kimberly Sandberg. Aye. Roger Bergman. Yes. Al Matson. Aye. Khalif. Aye. Kirk McDonald. Yes. Mark Schultz. Aye. Riley Graham. Aye. Helen Lafave. Aye. Jim Willis. Aye. Bill Blonigan. Aye. George Selman. Yes. All right. All right. Motion has been approved. First item under the action items is the consideration of the executive committee and the budget committee recommendation for the proposed 2021 budget. Mike. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, uh, uh, we attached the full uh, budget there and it's up to the uh, cable commission and to the NWCT board, which will have a separate vote on it at their meeting. Uh, we're seeking approval today. There was a budget presentation um, at our um, uh, September 17th meeting. And then we had a, a budget meeting right after that. And the uh, committee voted unanimously to approve the budget. I uh, just wanna uh, make a note that uh, we were able to decrease the budget through various means of reorganization and so forth, down, uh, approximately 11% across the board. So again, we're seeking approval from, uh, from this body of the 2021 budget. Any questions from the commission members? Al, this is Ann. I don't have a question, but I'll move approval. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Been seconded. Wendy, want to do the roll call? Aye. Daryl Sanis. Aye. Cheryl Arbeiter. Aye. Camille Heppola. <laughs> Aye. Ann Norris. Aye. Julie Deschler. Aye. Kimberly Sandberg. Aye. Roger Bergman. Yes. Al Matson. Aye. Bill Leith. Aye. Kirk McDonald. Yes. Mark Schultz. Aye. Riley Grams. Aye. Helen Lafave. Aye. Jim Willis. Aye. Bill Blonigan. Aye. George Selman. Yes. Motion has been carried. Next item is a presentation of the investment report. I assume Paul is out there somewhere. I am. Yes, he is, uh, Mr. Chair. We, we un invited uh, Paul Hennon. We typically do that uh, uh, once a year, usually at our November meeting, to give us an update uh, on our investments. So take it away, Paul. Mike, thank you for that, and it's good to see everyone again. Uh, first, I'm going to go over um, all the numbers and then a few comments. So you, you I, I, I provided um, a statement of the portfolio of all the investments that I managed for you, and so I'll, I'll go over the numbers, uh, and, and we're going over the third quarter, which ended in 930 of 2020. So 
the total evaluation for the account is two million two hundred and eight thousand fifty six dollars the portfolio is up fifty eight thousand eight hundred and eighty two dollars on a year-to-date basis and estimate annual income on the portfolio is sixty two thousand six hundred and eighty eight dollars so that's what we call the current yield that's how much money is actually being uh, generated on the portfolio and that comes to on an annual basis 2.84 percent so look at that as the amount of cash that is being generated on the portfolio um, so on a year-to-date annualized return the the account is up uh, 3.67 percent and I would estimate that to be uh, carried through for the for the, the the final quarter. So for the year, I'm I would estimate that we would be very near that 3.67 percent on an on for the for the year of 2020. Uh, all fees on the portfolio. Uh, remain at 0.5 percent or a half a percent or and that is approximately about ten thousand dollars in fees so i would actually uh the 3.67 percent is actually net of fees so that is uh what we're um what i wanted to d disclose on a, on a fee basis so um the the only thing that I, I have three more points that I wanted to um, go over. <clears throat> um, one is that two years ago, if you remember, uh, I structured a, a bond ladder made up of U.S. Treasuries and certificate of de of bank deposits, and back then they were yielding three percent. Now those same uh, instruments. If you look at the five-year uh, treasury, they're yielding 0.26%. Well, the first installment of what I what I would call uh, 300,000 came due this fall. And looking at where the treasuries are, are now, I was able to locate, and unfortunately I was able to, to locate uh, some highly uh, rated low duration funds that income funds yielding uh two uh, over about two little over two percent so we're not getting three percent but i was able to locate some low duration that's what i want to try and concentrate on so i i i i, I put that into low duration uh income funds and we were able to get slightly above two percent on those funds so we have the remaining every every year now three hundred thousand dollars is going to uh, come due, and I'm going to uh, look for reinvestments uh, of of the best that there are out there that have low duration, and 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 we have to try and get the highest yield. So I'm looking for that as as these come due. If I put about almost half the portfolio in this laddered bond portfolio. So we have some time that will be yielding, a good part of it will, will be yielding 3%. Um, number two, um, I reduced our exposure on some real estate income interval, uh, interval mutual funds. And the net asset value has held steady ever since we purchased it, but I do have concerns as far as, um, uh, I, I guess, as far as the, uh, this whole uh, virus, coronavirus, and, and how it will affect real estate in the future. Uh, even as we're doing today, um, I have, um, you know, 
I, I just have have a sense that uh, everybody is uh, not everybody, but there's going to be more uh, use of what we're doing now, uh, as far as the um, Zoom and 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 the overall office real estate space. I th just think that 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 is bringing up some concerns to me and that's why i reduced our exposure to real estate so um and then the second thing well the, uh, you know i have i have basically i have three millennials they're all growing up and the all two of them are in the computer industry and my daughter's an electric electrical engineer and they're all working from home and I, and I, I, I sense a trend that that's where I, 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 I'm not sure, but I just want to reduce the exposure to the real estate funds. Uh, thirdly, well, that's my, my opinion, but then this, I guess that's just, just my opinion, but I, I look at this as a prudent move. And then I, I completely el eliminated our exposure to what's called credit yield interval funds. My concerns here is basically a, a liquidity concern. Um, it's it, If you look at the, simply put, if you buy a bond or a loan and what these funds do, that's what they do. They buy up, they buy loans or they, and they buy different types of bonds but if you buy it at par and with the lack of liquidity, which I sense is, is out there as a risk, you won't be able, you'd have, if you want to sell it, you're going to have to sell it at a discount. And that's what I don't want to see happen to um, any of the investments that I have in the portfolio. So bottom line here, both of the, of, of the, of, the mentioned internet funds were yielding 5%, but it's tough to give up that, those yields. But in my opinion, given the concerns that I have on this, I, I think it's prudent for us to, to, uh, to do this. Um, and as I like, I'm not an alarmist, but as I stressed to my three uh, children, as they were growing up, I have always pointed out to them that it's easier to stay out of jail than to get out of jail. <laughs> and, and that's a quote from Mark Twain, but I, I'm know. not, you know, <laughs> but it, it just is where I see this, everything is that I'm, I'm trying to have, I don't want to have any surprises here. And that's what I'm trying to reduce here. I'd rather uh, reduce um, my exposure to what I have concerns about and I can find um, a, a good investments that are probably still yielding 2%, but I just, when Greg Moore and I set this whole thing up, we wanted to have uh, no surprises and get the highest possible yield given the con conditions that we're in. And that's what, what I'm, I'm paid to do. So um, I don't, I don't have any other comments uh, or, or um, issues that I want to cover, but I'm going to open it up to any, any questions out there. I'd like to have some questions, but if not, um, okay, um, Mr. Blonigan, is yes. that you? First of all, first of all, thank you for clarifying that, um, that stay out of jail is easier than getting out of jail came from Mark Twain rather than your personal experience. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> and then, that's true enough. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> um, congratulations for um, this three and two thirds percent yield that's outstanding in today's environment. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm looking at page five of 16 on the portfolio. Okay. Let me let me go there. Excuse me. And I'm seeing on that page that you, because I'm, I'm trying to find something that's more than three and two thirds to balance out uh, how the heck you got that high yield. And I'm seeing these things that are um, 
5.47% and 5.84%. And I'm appreciative of that. What, tell us about those funds. I, I'm assuming that a city can't do those, um, but tell, and somehow this organization can, tell us about those funds and- um, Well, that, that, Mr. Blodigan, that is referring to the, um, the first one is, if you look at it, it's that Blue Rock, uh, real estate income fund and that is yielding 5.47 percent and so that that's going to go the, away yeah that's the one that i reduced exposure now we have about forty thousand now um in i've reduced the, i've re reduced it down to from seventy five thousand to about about forty five thousand so okay. that's one of the funds that I wanted to reduce. That was the real estate fund that I was actually referring to on my second point. And then the third point, if you look at the, the one that Kion Airs Diversified Credit Fund, right. that's, the one, that's also yielding 5.84%. That's the one that I actually want to, um, I, I totally liquidated or I, 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 I um, sold that and these are what, what are called interval funds and you can only get out on a quarterly basis so that's why the statement shows it that we um it's still on on the 930 statement but in october and november here i reduced both of those funds i reduced i totally reduced the, the cayenne funds and that was the credit um that was the credit fund that I wanted to reduce. We're giving up the 5%, but we're doing it for the sake of capital preservation. And, and then, I, I can find yeah. I can find other things, but I'm willing at this point, um, there's, I'm starting to see some liquidity things. And when these credit funds, uh, they're not, they're not very liquid. And if somebody wants to sell, they're not, uh, there's, there's a lack of, of of buyers for it, so, um, so that's that's my motive and that's my move and that's what I wanted to eliminate. But we did have we made good money on the, on those funds while we had them, but at this point, um, I just want to uh, try and move that into um, something that is more. Um, I Lots guess it's of, yeah. yeah, it's more of more of a situation where I want to avoid any possibility and I don't want to get since since we have to we can only get out of these funds on a quarterly basis and they've been very steady and they held up very well, but it's more of a precautionary move and looking at we are where the where the where we are in this um, I guess bond and interest environment. Um, it's a move towards, uh, I guess, capital capital preservation, and that's what I think is the prudent thing to do. Okay, thank you once again for getting us uh, three and two thirds percent interest. Thank oh, you. Oh yeah, much. and I'm and I think you know. Keep in mind, we still have about half of the portfolio is still generating. If you remember right, that 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 laddered bond portfolio. We went out two years, three years, four years, and five years. So we just had the the, the uh, first uh, installment come due on our, on, and so we have four years of three percent money that is in treasuries and certificates of deposit. Uh, three years, two years ago, this they were all yielding three percent, and then drastically they reduced now. So um, we still have about half the portfolio that is still generating uh, 3% or more, 3.1, 3.2. And they're all in US treasuries short. Uh, and, uh, and when I say treasuries, I mean uh, short term, like two or three and four years. So they'll be coming due and the rest are in bank uh, certificates of deposit. So as far as the safety is concerned, uh, we still have a good portion of the portfolio yielding 3%. And, and I'm still able to locate about 
two percent on low duration and that's what i want to keep was low, low duration because that helps me uh, manage the fund with uh if interest rates rise thank so, you that answers the question okay thank you any other questions for paul Paul, I appreciate the, the work that you're doing and, and uh, thank you for your, your uh, in-depth review of this. If there are no other questions for Paul, I'd ask for a motion to accept uh, his investment report. So I'll move. Suzanne, I'll move that. Second. Okay, the motion's been made and second. Wendy, did you get to who made the motion? You're muted, Wendy. I did not get who motioned. Uh, who made the motion? I who made it first. Okay, Roger and, and then Ann seconded. Ann seconded. I think. Okay. Okay. Wendy, right. roll call vote. Daryl Sanis? Aye. Daryl. <coughs> sorry. Sharon Arbeiter? Aye. Camille Hippola? Aye. Ann Norris? Aye. Dewey Deschler? Aye. Kimberly Sandberg? Aye. Roger Bergman? Aye. Al Matson? Aye. Bill Leith? Aye. Kirk McDonald? Yes. Mark Schultz? Aye. Riley Grams? Aye. Helen Lefave? Aye. Jim Willis? Aye. Bill Blonikin? Aye. George Selman? Yes. Motion has been approved. Paul, thank you for your due diligence. Greatly thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, Mr. Matson, and thank you, Mr. Johnson. It's a pleasure to uh, serve you guys. So, thank you. Next item is open at large appointments to the NWCT Board of Directors. Uh, Mike? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I'll try to make this quick. Uh, basically, we have two open at large positions. Uh, it is up to the Cable Commission to make these at large positions uh, appointed to the NWCT Board of Directors. Uh, I was contacted by uh, Cable Commissioner Mark Schultz from Osseo, who is uh, interested in serving. And, uh, and then that would obviously leave uh, one position open for a commissioner to serve. Uh, oftentimes we don't get enough commissioners to serve and then we reach out uh, to uh, the NWCT volunteers in the create area and um, and in this particular case, so if, if there's not a commissioner uh, uh, interested in serving on the board, we do have somebody who's strongly interested in serving and very qualified uh, from Maple Grove. Uh, uh, she ran uh, with uh, alongside uh, Roberta Reindorf, who's in this meeting right now. She was newly elected uh, from Brooklyn Park and want to congratulate her uh, as a person who will be serving as the CREATE uh, volunteer representative. Uh, and we do have a, a person in Maple Grove who specializes in working uh, uh, with Three Rivers Park District with diverse communities and has a very, and, and an immigrant from Peru uh, originally. And so, so in that regard, there is an interest level beyond, you know, a cable uh, commissioner in terms of, of filling that other seat. But it, certainly it is up to uh, the commission to, you know, make those appointments. I just wanted to let you know what we currently have in terms of uh, Commissioner Schultz, who's interested, and uh, this uh, uh, person who's currently a volunteer who's interested in serving. But uh, so I'll, you know, leave it with that because we we definitely want to fill these seats so we can have a, a a full group on our board. Questions from the commission members. Hey, Al. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to um, just let everybody know um, why I expressed interest. Um, some of you know, some of you don't. I chose not to run for re-election to the Osseo City Council. So the opportunity to move up from a commission seat directly to that um, really wasn't in, in question. And, and one of the things when I made the decision to not run again is I look back over my 10, over 10 years in city government and looked fondly at my time um, on the uh, board here as, as well. And being able to help negotiate the now defunct CenturyLink contract um, as well. But it's just one of the things that, that I really enjoy doing. Additionally, um, we've got a lot of different things coming over the years and 
opportunities and need to get creative with not only my government experience, but also my small business experience. I was I'm just hoping that you all see the benefit to that in the board going forward. And, and I'd really like your support for um, the appointment today. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, any other comments from the commission members? Uh, George Salmon here. I, I just want to uh, thank Mark for putting his hat in the ring and uh, I fully endorse uh, hit him moving to that position. I've gotten to know Mark quite well over the years and have a, a lot of respect for him and, and his opinion. And uh, I hope everyone else supports him as well. Other comments? So Bill? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ch um, I, I support Mark too, but I'm looking at um, the vote to uh, that Roberta eventually won apparently and I was looking at the qualifications of both people that were running and thinking, wow, I, I don't wanna vote on which one of these two people to appoint. So are we able, as Mike uh, alluded to, to have a motion today, if no, especially if no one else from the um, commission runs to appoint both people today to the um, commission? I believe we have that capability. Uh, Mike, yeah, your thoughts? So, yeah, currently, uh, Roberta, who's actually on this in this meeting right now and very uh, happy to have her on board. I've gotten to know Roberta over the years as a very active uh, volunteer. She's already, so she technically already has a, a, a seat and has won. And the person who uh, uh, did not win, but extremely qualified is uh, uh, Gina uh, Posner from Maple Grove who expressed interest to me that she would love to, to be involved with our board. And so, so at this point, unless a commissioner comes forward, the people that I know that are interested are uh, Commissioner Schultz and uh, Giannia uh, Posner from Maple Grove. Further comments from the commission members? Mike, uh, your recommendation so, on our next move? Well, I well again, if no if no commissioner is interested, because that is like the initial thing. If they're not interested, I would I would definitely, from a staff perspective, strongly recommend uh, the slate of of uh, Commissioner Schultz and uh, Janina Posner, and and you have her all of her background information. It's actually mm -hmm. in the NWCT packet. Because uh, I know she's strongly interested, and she could help us a lot with. We had a long discussion about diversity, and she's an expert in that area, and uh, and just a, a very prolific volunteer. So that would be a staff recommendation if no commission, other commissioners come forward. If there are no other commissioners, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, Al. This is Ann. I could. I would like to make a motion that we appoint the two as recommended by staff. Mark Schultz, okay, Commissioner Schultz and um, Gina, Gianna. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. second. I hear a couple of seconds. Uh, Wendy, roll call. Roll call. Okay. Um, Daryl Sanis? Yes. Sharon Arbreiter? Yes. Camille Hapala? Aye. Ann Norris? Aye. Julie Deschler? Aye. Kimberly Sandberg? Aye. Roger Bergman? Yes. Al Matson? Aye. Bill Leith? Aye. Kirk McDonald? Yes. Mark Schultz? Aye. Riley Grams? Aye. Helen LaFave? Aye. Jim Willis? Aye. Bill Blonigan? Yes. George Selman? Yes. Motion does carry. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Next item is uh, Comcast Franchise Fee Settlement, which is uh, something that's rather distasteful for me, but uh, I, uh, I think we're in a position where they have a little bit more staying power than we do, and so uh, we may want to continue to duke this out, but uh, I'll probably be dead by the time we uh, even get close to a different settlement amount. So anyway, Mike, you want to discuss that one? Yeah, just tee it up uh, really quick because I want to keep our meeting uh, moving along that uh, yes, we've we've been working on this for quite some time. 
and uh, and I think we have actually, you know, the best attorney in the in the country. There's a, there's a few telecom attorneys out there, and and Mike has done a good job uh, on this. It, it, it's it is a difficult process, and uh, and of course definitely has of course deep pockets and can wait us out till forever. And so the, ultimately the question boils down to you know how much. How much longer do you want to wait? How many more? How much more legal expenses do does the commission want to endure? And um, and so and then we got some things out of it too, and which I'll have Mike explain in terms of our actual franchise agreement. So uh, I'll uh, then just turn it over to Mike. Well, thank you, Mike, and good good morning, uh, commissioners. I'm uh, very pleased to be with you today. Um, just to give uh, all of you some, and your listeners some additional background on this, you'll remember that in, uh, in 2018, the commission joined up with four other local franchising authorities um, to choose a financial consultant. And um, we, we put out bids and um, the group selected Ashpon Skulko to, to conduct the, a, fin a franchise fee review for all the the jurisdictions for uh, 2016, 2017, and the first quarter of 2018. Ashbon Skulko then um, uh, worked with Comcast through data requests um, and prepared a report that came out in late 2019, fall of 2019. That report was um, received and filed by all of the franchising authorities, including uh, this body. And um, the next step that we took was to ask Comcast to respond to that report, and they did. There was a large discrepancy between the Comcast position and the position of Ashpon Skolko. After we received the Comcast uh, response, we then um, set up a, a conference call um, to allow both Ashpon Skolko and Comcast to review their findings with the executive directors of all of the jurisdictions. Uh, we did that, I think we learned a lot from that. We then reported back to all of the, the commissions um, through the commission leadership structure. Uh, with this group, we met with the executive uh, committee. At that time, um, it was decided that we would uh, look to see if there was a way to resolve um, our differences with Comcast. And so starting in 2020, then we, um, we began discussions in earnest with, with Comcast and we, and we came forward um, and, and reached an agreement here just last Friday with Comcast. And that's the agreement that you have before you uh, today. In your, um, in your packet, there's a staff report um, and then the settlement agreement itself. Um, I'm, uh, I'm actually pleased with this result. We've, you know, we've been doing this a long time. Um, these franchise fee um, discussions can be difficult. There's not um, often not clear guidelines, um, accounting guidelines for these types of um, matters, and certainly not a lot of legal precedent on these matters. Um, the, the settlement agreement that we, we reached with Comcast was com as Comcast is going to pay the commission um, 159,000, um, 900 and some dollars, um, for the franchise fee underpayment. Um, Comcast is also going to pay for, uh, an, an additional $7,500 in, um, the commission's cost to cover a portion of the commission's costs. Um, it will cover, by the way, all of my costs. It will cover a portion of Garth's costs. Um, by joining these five other uh, or four other jurisdictions, um, we were able to split my costs um, by five. So it, you paid one fifth what you would normally pay for this type of matter. And there was also a significant savings for the, uh, for the audit. Usually an audit would cost um, around $25,000 or more. And, um, and this audit with Ashpon Skulko ended up costing around $10,000. Um, an, another significant piece in the, in the settlement agreement is an agreement um, on the, the definition of gross revenues um, moving forward. 
not only for this cable franchise, but for your next cable franchise. And that's a significant piece. The, the, the definition of gross revenues and the auditing provision um, are, are both agreed upon for um, the remainder of this franchise and for the next renewed franchise. Those of you who have been around uh, the commission since the last renewal was in 2014, um, you know that those are two significant pieces of a franchise renewal. So um, we're pleased to get that resolved through this process. With that all, I'm happy to answer any questions, but our, uh, our recommendation is to approve the settlement agreement and to um, approve your executive director to sign the, um, the settlement agreement. Thanks, Mike. Uh, comments from commissioners? Just one quick question. Um, what was the amount that was calculated that they actually owed us versus what we settled for? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the the Ashbon Skolko report um, initially found an underpayment of $413,000. And initial Comcast response um, was they agreed to an underpayment of $63,000, $63,708. Must be old versus new math. Huh? Well, like I said, there, there's, uh, there's not a lot of clarity when you, you start to, to look at these, these issues. You know, part of our, our thinking on this was that there's litigation in two different areas of the country on uh, the issues that were raised by Ash Pond Skulko. So um, rather than going into a contentious legal battle with issues that they're already in, um, we agreed to allow Comcast to continue to, um, to calculate gro gross revenues the way they were on bundled services, which is kind of where the primary um, financial difference is on this thing. Um, for a period of five years beyond the end of our review period, which was the first quarter of 2018. So that takes you to uh, 2023. And um, the thinking there is that will give the, the litigation time to resolve and we'll have some guidance then either through a court decision or through some other type of resolution um, where we can see where, um, you know, where those arguments ended up flying and, and we don't have to incur the cost. Other comments from the commissioners? Uh, Bill Blon again, Bill. I have oh, a, uh, just a question. A, a, thanks for settling this for $160,000 plus some costs. That's very significant. Um, B, on the, I just have an agree, um, question on the agreement on, and I'm not, suggesting we change the agreement whatsoever. Just a question. At page, at paragraph 1.2 of the agreement, it recites the fact that this is uh, regarding an audit for the period January 1, 2015 through March 31, 2018. Then at paragraph 5.0 of the agreement, it says these provisions um, shall become effective January 1st, 2021. And those our provisions with regard to the method by which you calculate gross revenue. And so there's a, there's a time gap in between that, between um, G paragraph 1.2, March 31, 2018 ending, and the new calculation method of January, starting January 1, 2021. So for the interim time period between um, March 31, 18 and January 1, 2021, um, are you comfortable with the method of calculation and the amount of fees that we get during that time period? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. That, that's a good question. Yes, uh, we are. And, and that's what we agreed to. We agreed on, on, the, on the biggest issue, which was the bundled fee. You know, how, do you, how do you determine what the uh, bundled fee revenue is for, for cable services? Um, we agreed in this agreement that um, the method that Comcast has been using, that they used in the review period, can continue to be used through 2023. So I'm comfortable um, with that. With that, again. thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Other questions from the commissioners? <clears throat> Mr. Bradley, I thank you for your work on this. It, it probably, uh, you know, it's, it's something that would certainly not be in <clears throat> our best interest to try to duke it out with Comcast. Uh, their staying power is just a little bit greater than ours. So um, I would, you know, my opinion is that we will move on with this. So uh, any other comments from commissioners? I agree, Al. And I think the uh, provision that Mike explained about defining the gross revenues is important to the commission as we move forward. Since, as you know, I've been worried about that. Right. So with that, I'd move approval and authorize the executive director to execute the contract or the agreement. Motion has second. been made. Is there a second? Second. And second. Wendy, roll call. Daryl Sanis. Aye. Sharon Arbreiter. Aye. Camille Hippola. Aye. Ann Norris. Aye. Dewey Deschler. Aye. Kimberly Sandberg. Aye. Roger Bergman. Yes. Al Matson. Aye. Bill Leaf. Aye. Kirk McDonald. Yes. Mark Schultz. Aye. Riley Grams. Aye. Helen Lefebvre. Aye. Jim Willis. Aye. Bill Blonigan. Aye. George Selman. Yes. Motion has been approved. Again, thank you to both Mikes for uh, your work on this matter. Uh, next item is information items. Mr. Johnson. Uh, yes, we'll go right into the uh, cable and telecommunications update uh, back with our attorney, Mike Bradley. Uh, thanks, Mike, and, and um, good morning again, commissioners. We, uh, we put together a, a fairly detailed memo uh, for a legal update in your packet. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have uh, on that. Um, I, I'll, I'll just know one thing on the cable franchising appeal. We had uh, indicated that we expect a decision in the um, in the second half of uh, of 2021. That's a little bit um, an extended period from our last report, but um, we were hoping for oral argument in 2020. It looks like that's not going to happen. So the new the 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 new um, best information that we have is that the expectation is for oral argument first or second quarter of 2021 with a uh, later in 2021. But happy to answer any questions, any other questions you have. It's from the commissioners for Mr. Bradley. If not, uh, thank you, Mike. Next item under information is uh, communications. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the commission, just want to briefly, uh, you, you have a lot of communications items here. I'm going to just whip through them real quick. But on the day we had our uh, commission meeting last time or the day after we received the official uh, note about the franchise ending that uh, uh, Commissioner Schultz talked about that we worked on with a negotiation. Uh, so it'll be ending at the, uh, uh, it looks like at the end of the year, I think we'll receive uh, one more. Uh, payment from CenturyLink. That's just the official memo in the packet. And then uh, we also, uh, there was an Xfinity store opened up in Maple Grove. Uh, they've opened one up prior to that in Brooklyn Center. So their goal is to do more of these uh, Xfinity stores. Um, you'll notice when you go into them, of course, they're not necessarily pushing uh, at all traditional cable TV services, uh, but they are pushing uh, other kinds of services like their obviously their internet and their um, their uh, digital product called flex and mobile and all that so it's uh, it's really changed uh, uh, quite a bit uh, over the years and then of course they have to let us know about any uh, channel changes that's what you see here about these two uh, uh, channels here uh, revolt and aspire and then uh, some other uh, channels as well the black news channel is uh, uh, available on uh, a specific uh, 1116. This particular article here, I just wanted to point out that uh, I'm only showing you the first page of it, but if, if everybody has an opportunity to read that, which, I, which was included uh, both electronically fully and in your uh, packet, you will get a good, a very good, this is one of the better 
uh, articles I've read about kind of the future of, of cable television, the future of streaming and the big players. Excellent, excellent piece and strongly recommend uh, you, re you read it. Uh, uh, it, just, it, it, it just is, I, I think it's pretty spot on from what I can tell and all the things I've, uh, I've been aware of, of, of things happening in the industry. So if you, if you can take some time and take a look at that. I talked a, a, a few moments ago about the Comcast Flex product. They, uh, this article talks about a, a Comcast product for, car, for cord cutters, right? Because we often talk about cord cutters. So if people are, are cutting their traditional TV, uh, their video service, Comcast still wants to keep them on through this Flex program. And, and really uh, the bread and butter for Comcast going forward anyway is really their high-speed internet services and then keeping people on these digital uh, platforms. Not so much, you know, traditional uh, cable television as we know it. And in the industry, things are changing quite a bit in the industry. This is an article about ESPN. They're eliminating 500 positions. That's 10% 10, that's, uh, 10 of their workforce. Uh, the reason being is they're going to put a lot of effort into um, a streaming and those types of things and, and not necessarily doing the things that they used to do because they're losing they're losing quite a bit of money um, and, and they're owned by Disney and the Disney Channel though is doing quite well. I mean, they're, 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 they're selling um, subscriptions left and right and, and a big player in the industry. Want to talk a little bit about this because I'm going to be sending out a, a memo uh, to all the city managers and of course to all the commissioners and NWCT board members. Um, Comcast is, is uh, implementing a, a program to help uh, small businesses, especially minority uh, small businesses. So beginning in late November, November 28th, they will begin accepting applications um, for um, uh, grants that Comcast will give for marketing and any creative work that uh, businesses may need. And of course, uh, as you know, we have uh, uh, in the Northwest suburbs, some of the most diverse populations right here. And so I, I had sent a, a note to Carly and said, you know, I, I'm going to do what I can to make sure that everybody knows about this in the Northwest suburbs, all the businesses. And uh, we're hoping, you know, I'm kind of crossing our fingers that, that some of our businesses in our local area, because this is a nationwide program, that some of these businesses end up uh, getting these grants. So um, th this information will be going out to the cities, the city managers, some of the chambers of commerce, various uh, uh, immigrant groups that run businesses. So um, we're happy that Comcast is doing it. In fact, uh, Dave is going to be mentioning something a little bit later in our uh, board meeting where we are helping, you know, any small businesses out there because the small businesses are suffering and suffering big time. And so we implemented uh, a couple of several months ago, a small business uh, assistance, advertising assistance program that Dave will talk about uh, that the staff worked on to try to help businesses. And now Comcast, I'm not saying Comcast stole our idea, but what I'm saying is they see the need too. And, and uh, that there's just a lot of help that's needed and advertising in itself is extremely expensive. So anybody who can help uh, the, the, uh, the businesses out is a, is a, is a great thing. Uh, third quarter results from Comcast. I'm just putting up a couple pages here. You see that they had in just in the third quarter, uh, 25 billion in revenue. Uh, but, but a lot of that goes into other areas, right? They've got the business class, they own NBC Universal, uh, the Sky Entertainment out of Europe. Um, the uh, cable communications third quarter, basically, uh, if you look at more of the text there where it says customer relationships, it says plus 4.9%. But what that really, it doesn't mean cable customers. In fact, they're, they're losing video customers, but they're talking about high speed internet customers. Remember when, when COVID hit, there a, a massive amount of people went onto the high speed uh, internet product on Comcast. And then, uh, so that's, that's where their uh, bread and butter is. Again, like I said, the traditional uh, video service, which is listed under revenue uh, below the last line, it says minus 2.1%. So again, internet way up, you know, traditional uh, video services uh, down. And then finally, I just wanted to mention that, you know, we are, uh, because we're a public organization, uh, we uh, are required to adhere to the uh, Pay Equity Act. And, and so I want to just say that we, uh, once again, I think this is done every uh, couple of years. 
we, uh, we you know, passed with flying colors and, and uh, wanna thank uh, Wendy for helping uh, put together that report. And certainly we appreciate all of our employees here and wanna compensate them fairly across the board. And, and this report uh, helps uh, uh, signify is, is that's exactly what we do. So that's really it in terms of what I have under communications. Any questions for Mike? <clears throat> If not, we'll move to the uh, service recognition. Mike? Sure, this is uh, very exciting. Now in the, uh, in the past, we would uh, recognize people in person. So we're going to do our, the best we can in a little virtual uh, presentation here to just recognize the cable commissioners. And we're gonna do the same thing on the NWCT side when we get over to that meeting in just a few minutes here. But we want to uh, recognize the, the people I've listed in this memo in this order. Uh, for their service uh, on the board. And so I'm going to put up the first one. We Again, uh, Roger Bergman, who's out, he, he's in our meeting now. Uh, thank you, Roger. Uh, everybody's uh, waving to Roger right now. Thank you for your five <laughs> years of service. Uh, and we'll thank you. A, a plaque coming in the mail. Riley Grams uh, from Osseo. Uh, thank you for your five years of service. Well, that's an old picture. Much. Um, <laughs> And then we've got Mark Schultz. We're talking about Mark, 10 years. Thank you, Mark, for your 10 years. And then um, Ann Norris, 20 years of service. Ann, thank you for Holy your moly. service. <laughs> and last but not least, we've got Jim Willis, who uh, has served uh, 25 years on the uh, Cable Commission. So thank you, Jim, for your service. Also want to mention that Jim was just recently uh, elected to the Plymouth City Council, uh, as, as is Bill Blonigan was the uh, one for mayor, and then uh, who's also on our uh, commission, and then Andy Hoff with the City of New Hope, who also uh, won in the election. And then we want to have one special thank you to Julie Deschler. Julie, thank you for your service. I know you're outgoing uh, off the commission now and you won't be on the Crystal City Council anymore, but we wanna thank you for your service and uh, we'll make sure that that plaque uh, gets out to you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to each of you for uh, your dedication and your service. Greatly appreciated. Bad we can't uh, do this in person. Um, Anything else to come before the commission meeting? If not, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn, McDonald. Motion I'll second it, Julie. Second. <laughs> Wendy, roll call. Cheryl Sanis. Aye. Sharon Arbreiter. Aye. Camille Heppola. Aye. Ann Norris. Aye. Julie Deschler. Aye. Kimberly Sandberg. Roger Bergman. Aye. Al Matson. Aye. Bill Leith. Aye. At, um, Kirk McDonald. Yes. Mark Schultz. Aye. Riley Grams. Aye. Helen Lefebvre. Aye. Jim Willis. Aye. Bill Blonigan. Aye. George Selman. Yes. Motion passes. Thanks to each uh, and every one of you. Um, Marsha, you're up. Yep. All right, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, I had to switch over. My, my neighborhood became unusually noisy this morning, so I switched over to my uh, headset. Uh, so um, we're starting the meeting with the consent items, um, which would be the approval of the minutes and the approval of the treasurer's report. Is there a motion? So moved. Second, Anne. Okay, we've got a move and second. So if uh, no comments, Wendy, we need roll call. Duane Orn. Did I not see him on the list? He's muted. Unless... Yeah, I think he's muted. Yeah, uh, Dr. Orn, uh, do you want, I'll, uh, can you unmute your, um, I can see him there. There we go. You just have to hit the button in the bottom left hand side of your screen. Uh, just click on uh, the microphone. Okay, well, it looks like uh, we're having some issues. Wendy, why don't we keep moving on? Okay, Camille Heppola? Aye. Ann Norris? Aye. Cheryl Weiler? 
Aye. Al Matson. Aye. Brooke McDonald. Yes. Riley Grams. Aye. Helen Lefebvre. Aye. Marcia Glick. Aye. Joni Klassen. Aye. Daryl Sanis. Aye. Um, I think I saw Charlie Bros. Aye. And Mary LaHaye. Aye. Okay. Our next item is the. Um, I'm unmuted at this point, and I vote yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is the Executive and Budget Committee recommendation, and this was uh, presented at the previous meeting. Mike, anything else? Nope, just uh, seeking approval from uh, uh, the NWCT board for uh, the 2021 budget. That's it. I would move approval, McDonald. Nora second. 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 Okay, we have moved and seconded. Any discussion? Wendy, roll call. Dwayne <clears throat> Orn. Aye. Camille Heppola. Aye. Ann Norris. Aye. Chair Weiler. Aye. Al Matson. Aye. Kirk McDonald. Yes. Riley Grams. Aye. Helen Lefebvre. Aye. Marcia Glick. Aye. Joni Klassen. Aye. Daryl Sanis. Aye. Charlie Bros. Aye. Mary LaHaye. Aye. Okay, our next item is a resolution accepting donations. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair, uh, we will be doing this obviously at every meeting if there's any time there's any uh, donations that come from, be, from the last meeting to this meeting, uh, we will recognize them in a formal uh, resolution. Uh, you see the names there of people who have just uh, donated basically through our website. And we're very thankful for that. And the actual resolution is on your screen right now. So we just uh, need to get approval to uh, accept uh, this resolution. Move approval. And this is Ann. I'll second. Okay, we've got moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, Wendy. Dwayne Orn. Aye. Camille Heppola. Aye. Ann Norris. Aye. Cheryl Weiler. Aye. Al Matson. Aye. Kirk McDonald. Yes. Riley Grams. Aye. Helen Lefebvre. Aye. Marcia Glick. Aye. Joni Klassen. Aye. Daryl Sanis. Aye. Charlie Bros. Aye. Mary LaHaye. Aye. Okay, next up we have committee vacancies. Um, Mike, you wanna explain this? Sure, um, we mentioned this last time and uh, these are the, the committee vacancies that we currently have, one on the uh, NWCT Executive Committee, uh, one on the Policies and Activities, and then two on the NWCT Budget Committee. Um, I'm guessing that with some of our new members, once um, uh, Roberta Reindorf is, is uh, officially on our um, uh, board in uh, February, she might be interested, and I know um, Janina might be interested, but certainly we, we, we're always looking for volunteers because some people may be going off who are, who are retiring from the board. So if there's anybody interested right now um, in any of these positions, we would We'd, I guess we'd like to know that so we can start filling them. Hey, Mike. Yes. Mark, Mark Schultz here. Um, I'm interested in any or all the positions, whatever, wherever I need to serve, I'm fine with it. Okay. Um, well, I'm guessing the, uh, let's see here, NWCT executive policies. Um, I guess you could, if, if you want to, uh, I guess if you want to go on the exit because of your years of experience with the um, with being uh, on the commission prior to this and and being involved with negotiations and I, I guess I I would recommend uh, uh, possibly with with your with your many years of experience being on the NWCT uh, executive committee and because um, I think on the policies we can definitely get the, some of the other uh, folks involved 
and or budget committee. So if you wanna, if you wanna put your name in the hat for, for both of those, that would still leave, uh, unless there's more commissioners, of course, uh, interested in serving in these. So, but that's where it sits right now. So I'm, I'm anxious to hear if there are any other commissioners. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. I mean, board members, <laughs> not commissioners, right? <laughs> board members. My, my, my head is still in the commission. I'm, I am now officially in the board meeting. So if there's any current board members interested in any of these, um, and, and like I said, it, it's possible that, you know, I would just bring this back in, in February and then we can kind of fill out the role too with, especially with some new members coming on. But if there's anybody who has a desire to serve, uh, now is the time too. Hey, Mike. Um, I, I would, if, if I'm able to, I'd, I'd be able to be on the budget committee. That's okay. Okay. Um, the policies and activities committee, it's always helpful to have a volunteer on there. And so I don't know yep. who's on the current activities group, but I think it would be good to have a volunteer in that position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we'll have with, uh, with, uh, Roberta. Uh, on and then um, we would have uh, Janina. Yeah, I'm sure one of those, one of the, we, we'd actually have three potential volunteers that could vie for that. Uh, two that would be brand new, and then uh, uh, one current. I don't have the roster in front of me, but uh, Wendy, do you have the roster of the uh, uh, of? Because uh, I know Charlie's going off uh, the the commission or the board. Okay, um, on the policies is um, Marsha, Kirk, and Dr. Orn. On the budget is Al, Marsha, and Helen. Okay. Yeah, so I think it would be good if we have that open position in policies be a volunteer. So yeah, and then um, certainly uh, Mary, if, if Mary LaHaye would be, you know, she's the other volunteer rep who has another year on her term. So Mary, I don't know if you want to think about that and then, you know, decide in February, it's certainly up to you. But if you want to decide now, that's an option as well. Uh, I really didn't want to volunteer for any more than what I have. Okay. I'm only going to put in next year and then I won't be running again. Okay. And I think it's a, probably a good idea then to bring it forward with the new volunteers and then and, and, and fill that position. And then um, uh, I guess uh, in, in terms of, of an actual um, uh, act, an, an action item, then we'd want to, I, I guess, uh, have somebody make a motion that we accept uh, uh, that uh, uh, board member Schultz uh, uh, um, go on to the executive and uh, budget committee and um, um, commission and, and board member um, Grams go on the budget committee. I'll make that motion. McDonald. Nora, second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Okay. Uh, Dwayne Orn. Yay. Um, Camille Heppola. Aye. Ann Norris. Aye. Cheryl Weiler? Aye. Al Matson? Aye. Kirk McDonald? Yes. Riley Grams? Aye. Helen Lefebvre? Aye. Marsha Glick? Aye. Joni Clausen? Aye. Daryl Sanis? Aye. Uh, Charlie Brose? Aye. And Mary LaHaye? Aye. <coughs> Okay, uh, next up is NWCT board elections. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I'm happy to report uh, that um, we did go through the board election. We did mention, uh, we, we got the results, I think on Monday. And again, <coughs> congratulations to Roberta Raindor from uh, Brooklyn Park, very prolific volunteer. Uh, she uh, has, has won the election and it's kind of, uh, uh, kind of a sweet thing for both people who ran, both very, very qualified. Uh, because uh, now this is an, also an option for uh, uh, Giannina uh, Posner from Maple Grove to serve uh, in, in a capacity on the board and help us. Um, uh, both, both, uh, both candidates will be uh, an excellent uh, addition to our board. So we're very excited about that. And, uh, and of course, we want to thank Charlie Bros for his two years of service on the board as well. And I, I think we might even uh, find a picture of him here later on in our meeting. But uh, uh, that's all I have. 
Okay, and then we have an update on the uh, diversity, inclusion, and social justice. Yes, as you recall at our last meeting, uh, uh, Commissioner Mike Elliott mentioned that the media plays a significant role in presenting stereotypes and creating narratives that, that may feed into racism. He pointed out that we have one of the most uh, diverse populations in the state of Minnesota, which we do right here in the Northwest suburbs. And he just uh, stated that it's important for us to thoughtfully engage in this topic and, and see uh, you know, what we can do uh, intentionally uh, to take on this issue uh, head on basically. And so we're in the process of putting together a committee to discuss additional ways we can have a positive in impact on the communities. And certainly we've, are, we, we've done you know, quite a bit out there in terms of how we do things and what we cover, but we wanna put together this committee and uh, have further discussions uh, on this topic and then report back uh, in February. Uh, I know uh, for a fact that uh, Roberta Reindorf has already reached out to me uh, our newest board member and interested in serving uh, on this uh, committee. Um, uh, Giannia uh, Posner also is interested uh, in serving on this committee. Um, I know Camille Heppala ha has expressed uh, some interest uh, in serving on this committee, uh, meet committee, excuse me, and she uh, has already helped me with some uh, specific issues we want to uh, talk about as well. So. So that is it. If, the, if there are other board members potentially interested in serving, you know, certainly let us know. We're also going to reach to, uh, on, on the outside as well and uh, uh, seek some input on this. And that's really all I have, unless anybody has any questions. Okay. Anybody have any questions? All right. So that brings us to the election report. Yes. Uh, officially, uh, we have uh, one of the big things we do every year is our election coverage. And I'm very proud of our team uh, that uh, uh, it's, a, it's a major undertaking for our staff. And this is a great uh, public service. Lots and lots of work went into this all the way back to summer. And uh, I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Shannon Slatten, our news director, who basically uh, coordinated this uh, effort and also worked with various departments and, and Tim Gaffrin on all the other meetings that we had and uh, out in uh, various facilities. So take it away, Shannon. All right, thanks, Mike. Um, I am going to hit the highlights on the three pages that you have in your packets and try to give you a little more insight behind the numbers. We did have two goals moving forward into the election season. The first was just to provide information to better inform voters in a very accessible way. And if you got on our website during the season, you would see that we had a grid divided into our nine cities. You click on the city and you have a list of all of your races, all of the candidates running for each one. You could click on each candidate and get more information on them and then all of the forums located there and so we really tried to be a one-stop shop for nonpartisan election information there and then secondly to provide a service for candidates to communicate their information for voters with COVID-19 really limiting how much door-to-door -door campaigning people could do it was more important than ever before to have a digital presence and so we recognize for a lot of the candidates who are running on their own dime um, some running for the first time, we're able to just kind of give them that uh, jumping off place, that seat at the table, so to speak, by providing them a video clip and um, a digital presence. They had actually a page on our website. And so I think the numbers tell the story. We had over a half a million website views, uh, 120,000 video views there. And those numbers are not by happenstance. We aggressively send out these links so people can find this information. And then we work really hard on the backside of the website um, with search engine optimization. So if somebody Googles Maple Grove City Council, our rate, our source is going to come up so they can find all of that information right there. So we put a lot of information um, kind of on the back side, the things that you don't see. We started with the primary election and we had 40 candidates, candidates participate. Excuse me. Now for the first, this is the first time we did this and it was a simple form that we sent out to candidates where they could just fill in why they were qualified and um, what they hope to accomplish in office and then provide a link for more information. And so we had folks take up, take us up on that. Um, moving into candidate forums, Tim Gaffron and his team um, spearheaded this, and it was uh, dealing with a lot of curveballs this year with COVID-19 and social distancing. I know they had to juggle a lot. Um, there were 57 races covered in 26 forums. Uh, these were offered digitally. They were in city council, um, city halls, and 
on in the CCX Create site as well. So there was a lot of work that went into this to make these actually happen. And then they were posted on each um, city's website or each city's portion of our local vote section. So once again, somebody could click in and immediately find that information. Moving on to candidate statements. Um, some of you on this call, you've, you've been through the drill, you know what candidate statements are all about, but we offer each candidate running for office 45 seconds to just tell the viewers about themselves uh, with one rule, don't say anything bad about anybody else. And so um, we had 97 candidates participate and that breaks down to about a 79% participation rate, but I actually think that number is skewed just a little bit lower because if you take, we offer this opportunity to everybody running for like the excuse me, U.S. Rep, the Senate, the House, like Dean Phillips, Ilhan Omar, and uh, Tina Smith, those races, and that included a lot of third-party candidates this year. So if you take all those off the table and you just drill down to our um, hyper-local area for city council and school board candidates, we had 89% participation rate. So I'm really proud of that because I think it shows that uh, people in this area that are running for office, they value, value us and what we bring to the table. So I'm pretty proud of that number. Um, and then on the next page, you can see how that breaks down um, to how many clicks we got per city. Maple Grove is really high, and I think there's two reasons why. Number one, their city kind of aggressively sent out our page, which we always appreciate. But then uh, I think Maple Grove City Council race really played out online. There was a lot of digital action on different platforms with that race. And when candidates aggressively send out those links, our clips go higher. Uh, we also had a lot of participation in the county commission race. We had 100% participation with uh, county commission candidates for District 1 and 7, and so those numbers are pretty high too. Now, of course, all this culminated on election night on the channel. We went on live starting at 8.30, and this, once again, like everything else, presented greater challenges because of COVID. We had to measure out spaces in our control room, making sure we weren't stuffing people everywhere. We had an alternate studio in our lobby. Uh, it was really an all hands on deck uh, scenario where we had people um, just working behind the scenes and then in front of the scenes on the phones, just making it all happen. Uh, we also incorporated Zoom interviews for the first time. So we were able to get interviews with the winning candidates. We were interviewing people who were like standing in their kitchen telling why they were happy to be on city council or why they appreciated um, the voters. So that was something new and it's something that I'm really proud of and I can definitely see us incorporating that into our coverage um, moving forward. We didn't have as many people stream us live on election night and I think that's because everybody was thinking about the presidential race and watching the, the big races, but the next morning when they were getting up, they were thinking, what, what happened in my city? What happened on the school board? And so that's when I saw our numbers really go up that next day and in the days following. We really tried to drill down and provide good content for each race. And that's why you see a difference in the number of website views and the video views. We know when people uh, view stories online, they're not always clicking on the video and watching it. They're reading the content. And so we really tried to work ahead of the game to have really good content on our website, recapping each race um, after the election and then providing viewers and voters with the information they needed ahead of the election. So that's just a, a bird's eye view of it all and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Hi, anybody have Tony. any questions? This Go ahead. Tony. I don't have a question. I just wanna thank you because having been a candidate in the past, and this year with COVID, running was really much more difficult. You couldn't go door to door and, you know, have that interaction with people at their doors. You could maybe drop off a, a piece of literature. But um, having this added um, candidate information online, I'm sure that all the candidates would like to say thank you because it allowed residents to see another option for the candidates candidates that were running and thank you for all your hard work and adding to these elections because this has been really a trying and hard year and uh, a lot goes into running so thank you so much for all that work a lot of curveball curveballs thank you any other comments I would, okay. I, I would as Go well, Marsha, I just wanted to say, um, as somebody who works in city communications, 
and has been doing it for a long time at, at Plymouth, I remember residents calling asking for candidate information, which we really aren't in the position to share. And being able to send them to CCX's website where they can see the candidate minutes, they can see uh, form if they are interested in, in hearing more in depth information. I mean, it's just a huge resource for the residents here because in the past it was like, well, check the weekly newspaper and then it became search for their website, you know. So uh, thank you, Shannon and staff. Thank you. I like to describe it as hunting and pecking. That's what people have to do to find the information. And we just tried to have it all in one place. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next item is the Small Business Advertising Assistance Program. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, we, uh, with COVID-19, obviously uh, this has been uh, very, very, very difficult on our small businesses. And we assembled a great team of employees that, that decided we, there's something we can do as an organization. And I'm gonna turn it right over uh, to Dave Kaiser, um, who coordinated this effort uh, on behalf of this organization and uh, have him uh, give you a little update on exactly what we did. Take it away, Dave. Thank you, Mike, and thank you board members for an opportunity here. That's what the SP EAAP stands for is the Small Business Advertising Assistance Program. So as you see those letters around in the future, that's what we're talking about. Again, as Mike mentioned, multifaceted approach to help out businesses in the area. Again, we wanted to set up as well and test some of our procedures that we would use for the future. I'll mention a little bit more about that in a second. Also show support to the community. It's a great way for us to show that we do care about businesses in the area. And then it was a way as well to inform businesses of all our services. We still are somewhat of a hidden jewel here in the area. So this was an opportunity to explain what CCX Media was and also what CCX Studios, our new website that deals with our creative services was all about. The offer, you see it on the form in front of you. Basically we said, we will give you $1,000 worth of production and advertising time or $100 is what the deal turned out to be. And we were happy to have 22 businesses respond to that up to this point. We're continuing on in the program. Many organizations, many different cities involved in that. You see some of the list of the different type of businesses that came in and were part of this. Local chambers and city development and business departments were very helpful as well. They helped us get the message out and we appreciate that. And as we do a next phase of this, we appreciate that help as well as we move into the future. This does again lead to future sustainability. So this was a great model for us to test some of the things we needed to do to be able to provide these types of services in the future. So it helped us through our production efforts. Also, we use some new software, as you see, the Vitables program, Broad Street programs help us with putting together videos and also inserting ads on our website. So a great experience up to this point. And again, it continues on as we look to talk about ways we can promote this, maybe door to door to some of the areas in the community that maybe weren't connected online through the way we promoted it, or also through some of the chambers or business development departments. So we are targeting some areas that we may go out and hand things out. So if you as board members know of any areas that this might be helpful to, let us know that. Send myself email or Mike email, and we will work on that to get those businesses spotted on the air. So keep watching the channel, look at the website. You'll see some of your neighborhood businesses on being promoted. Be happy to answer any questions people might have. Okay, any questions? Madam Chair, I just wanna thank Dave for his efforts on that. And of course, uh, double back on what Dave just said. If you, if you know of any businesses, let us know. I was actually in one business uh, uh, we work with in terms of doing uh, plaques and trophies. And she mentioned, I mean, she had to lay out, it was, it was basically a small business, you know, that kind of the majority of the businesses in this country are small businesses. She said she is suffering big time. I mean, they do a lot of sports trophies and things like that. And so I told her about this plan. And she says, well, I'm very interested. So uh, she had to let go of staff. She, she's basically running the whole shop by herself. Um, I think they did get some loans, but that money has kind of dried up. 
and um, so any, anyway, if you again put your feelers out there, we're we're very interested in in helping out as many of the small businesses as we can uh, within the northwest suburbs. And, and thanks again, Dave, and to the entire crew that worked on these. No, oh, I agree. Uh, I uh, think this information was shared with our the new Hope Business Networking Group, and uh, I really appreciate it also because our small businesses need all the help that they can get. So I, I'm glad that you put this program together. Yeah. Um, I think I was just talking with Riley here briefly. I think we'd like to invite you to our next Economic Development Authority meeting here um, in December, just to kind of talk about this. It'll help us raise awareness of the program to all of our small businesses. As you know, we have, we're pretty dense as far as how that goes here. And, and uh, our EDA is really active with our small business programs here. And we'd like to add you into that mix if we could. Excellent. Be happy to do that. Okay. Uh, anything else? So, board recognition. Yes. Uh, similar to what we uh, did with the commission, we want to recognize some of our board members. Uh, you you might see some some names, especially uh, familiar, because they were also recognized uh, within the commission. Uh, of members who served on both uh, bodies. And so again, uh, Riley Grams, congratulations on your five years of service with uh, the NWCT board. You gotta get and some updated uh, photos. What's that? <laughs> we gotta get some updated photos. Yeah, well, you know. Send them to me. I got the beer now, I can't. I can't. Oh, I see. <laughs> All right, yeah. send it to me, Riley. <laughs> exactly, we, we, we do what we can. And then Cheryl Weiler from the city of Golden Valley. Uh, Cheryl, thank you uh, for your service as well of serving on the board. We, uh, we appreciate that and your continued interest in, in serving. And then, uh, well, looky, looky here, we have Ann Norris again, 20 years of serving. Still 20 years, holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, uh, for your service as well. And we'll make sure those plaques uh, get sent out and not the, they won't end up in uh, you know 20 or 30 pieces that they are protected uh, somehow some way but uh, again thanks everyone for for service yeah thank you everybody um then we have the recognition of employees quite a list here yeah oh well before i forget i'm sorry i missed oh. one uh charlie i'm Brown. sorry we want to thank you for your service. He's outgoing. He's he's leaving the board. Thank you, Charlie. But he's not leaving CCX Media. He will continue to volunteer. Charlie, great job uh, representing the volunteers and great job of being a volunteer for the organization. We really appreciate your service. Thank so you. You'll be getting that plaque. Uh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. You can go on to the next item. Yeah, I'm sorry, Charlie. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Um, and then moving forward to the re recognition of employees for uh, five-year increments of service. Yes, uh, we've got quite a few. Uh, this is a great place to work. We have very little turnover. And so you will see that, you know, there's, there's people here that, that have many, many years of service. Uh, we want to uh, start out with uh, Dustin Cooper, who works over in the creative services department. Uh, Dustin uh, has been with us now for uh, five years, and we want to thank Dustin for his service. Isaac Rice, who's in charge of our uh, mobile uh, production truck. Isaac has done uh, a phenomenal job with doing all of our uh, events on site. And um, he just uh, uh, goes out. He, he's the one working out in all the elements with all of our uh, various crew people. It could be uh, five degrees and they're the guy out there uh, while you're sitting in the uh, the uh, what do we call it the uh, the warmth of your living room they're out there uh, freezing on site doing uh, sporting events and things um, we then have uh, Chris Schnettler who works both with the, the sports and events department as well as city council meetings we want to thank Chris for his five years of service and also being out there on those van events Corey Bork a guy you may well you may see him because we the last couple of years we put we started putting his face on TV he's more of like the uh, the Wizard of Oz behind the scenes and works directly with Shannon on all of our, uh, our all of our uh, news and putting that together basically producing the news but he's also doing you might see him do a, a, a something about a local restaurant and those types of things and so uh, congratulations to Corey for his 15 years of service Roger Larson another person who mm -hmm. has done 
all kinds of uh, projects for us here, uh, helping out on the city history programs, doing um, you know all kinds of things, kind of a, a utility player does a little bit of everything. So thank you, Roger, for your service. Uh, Alec Meiselman, uh, five years of service uh, working on uh, sports and events as well. Uh, he's been uh, stellar and always being there when we need him. And then moving on to 20 years, we want to thank David Jorgensen. You may see him out at, uh, at some of the city council uh, meetings. He's, he's the guy behind the scenes in the control area uh, doing all the city council meetings uh, on your behalf and our behalf here. 30 year recognition for uh, Andy Jar. Andy has been with us uh, that long working on sports and events for a very, very long time doing photography and just helping us out where we need him. And then John Jacobson, uh, 30 years here uh, at the organization. He will receive the plaque that you see here on the right as well. Uh, John is our sports director. He, he's well known in the community. He can walk into any high school and everybody will uh, recognize him. I don't even think they ask for his ID when he goes to Cub to shop for groceries. I mean, and, and give them a check because they already know who he is. Uh, and then into the 35 year category, uh, we want to thank Tim Gaffrin for all that he does. Uh, he's been with us uh, si since day one. In fact, he, along with a couple of us, uh, started across the street with the cable company. Uh, 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 there's three of us who actually worked, wasn't Comcast, it was Northern Cable Vision at the time. We worked for them. And uh, Tim is uh, celebrating 35 years of service this year. Thank you, Tim, uh, for your service. And of course, Dave Kaiser. Uh, everybody knows Dave. Uh, Dave's been around a long time and has done a great job with all the on air, being assistant executive director. Uh, Dave is there for everything. If you need it done, Dave will get it done. And, and, um, and so we have just this uh, phenomenal staff uh, out there. And I'm not going to recognize myself, but I'm just going to say I've been here a long time, but I'm not going to go into any details. I, I enjoy working here. It's, been a, it's, it's really been uh, a, a pleasure. And uh, so uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve as your executive director. And, uh, and that's all I Thank have. you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we all recognize you and, and your service. Thank you so much to uh, all of the staff members. Um, anything else before we roll forward? No, that's it. And then I think if we, if we have just a few more minutes, we can then maybe possibly do these staff reports, if you'll allow. Uh, let's go ahead and do them. All right, well, let's move right into them. Uh, we've got uh, four different reports, uh, very brief reports. And I think we'll start out with Shannon, back to Shannon on news. Yeah, I'll be really quick, but thank you for giving us the opportunity to tell you what else we've been doing besides the election. We did a series of special stories for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, um, focusing on Maria Pugh, who was the young woman who um, died in a domestic violence incident in Maple Grove in April. Her family graciously allowed us to talk with her and tell her story. Um, so we talked to the police department, we talked to nonprofits, we just kind of tried to take an all encompassing look um, at her story and to kind of show an example of how domestic violence incidents happen right here in our own communities. Very, very tough story, but I think very important too. Um, also a very important story that we worked on, took a lot of extra effort, was um, talking about COVID-19 impact on seniors um, who are often more isolated and how different groups have tried to reach out and bridge that gap, the impact it's had on families. And so both of those two special reports um, we're condensed in a segment that will air again over the holidays when things are a little bit slower. Um, so we'll have that, be able to get a little bit more uh, mileage out of those stories. We continue our commitment to cover uh, Department of Health briefings or the governor's briefings whenever those happen. We provide a very simple bullet point format summary of it. And um, we've heard from people truly like all over the Metro, if not in different parts out state of people that just really appreciate that straightforward approach. And it takes, a, we dedicate a lot of time to it. So I'm glad it's well received. And then finally, we just keep on doing the news, putting out new stories seven days a week and new information on the channel six to seven days a week as well. So Mike, that's all. I'll, I'll let somebody else talk about what they're doing. Okay, let's move on to cities with Tim Gaffrin. Uh, thank you, everybody. Do you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, um, I'll be brief. Um, Channel 16 meeting coverage uh, continues. We covered regular slate of meetings uh, over the last several months on top of all the candidate forms that you 
heard about earlier. Um, most of those meetings were in a hybrid form, um, some mostly in person. And in the last week or so, um, we've moved back to uh, mostly virtual. Um, we had Robbinsdale Crystal in Brooklyn Park here um, just in the last, uh, this past week. Um, and I expect that that will continue for a while with uh, developments with the COVID and um, restrictions and everything. So we, we adapt and adjust and uh, we'll keep doing what we're doing as much as long as we can. Um, Chambers upgrade projects, well, Canada Forms is next on the list there. Um, we've pretty much heard about, about that in Shannon's report. Um, it was a busy, busy candidates uh, forum season on top of our regular slate of 30 regular city meetings a month. So um, again, I appreciate uh, my crews, my part-time people that are um, dedicated to, to getting all this done for us. Um, chamber upgrade projects, uh, Plymouth is in full planning swing. Uh, we spent a couple of hours on a conference call yesterday reviewing wiring diagrams and touch screen designs and layouts. Um, made a bunch of notes for the um, integrator for that and we'll be meeting with uh, city staff again on Monday to review some of that with them. Um, actual in-chambers work will start in mid-December on that project. And uh, Golden Valley, we're still in um, discussions on, on what the um, plan is for that one. So that's all I have for right now, unless there are questions on anything. All right, thanks, Tim. Uh, oh, and then here's, we, we added on Tim's report, just so you know, we've got uh, uh, all the uh, counts on the viewer counts. We put this in our annual report as well, but each city is delineated there with uh, uh, how many views they get at their uh, monthly city or, or their city council meetings entirely. And uh, so you see, uh, depending on the time of the year, depending on the subject matter, uh, the viewership can go uh, in, in various directions. So uh, thanks for putting that together, Tim, and all your work that you do with the cities. And of course, uh, with, with all the uh, uh, candidate forums that we talked about in your report, that was, that was phenomenal. So let's move on to uh, Javier Cedillo. Hello, good morning. Um, I just wanted to mention the, and I'll be quick, of course, uh, I'll be covering the election results um, for the board meeting. I just want to congratulate Roberta for um, getting on the board. And uh, it, it was a special one because of this whole uh, pandemic. We had to figure out another way of getting people uh, a, a quicker, faster way to vote. Uh, so we figured out electronically. So I appreciate everybody that had voted. Um, it was a great attendance and we counted the votes. And of course, Roberta got the seat and uh, um, also with the members, they are coming in now, uh, everybody's being positive, everybody's, not, you know, um, trying to make as many shows as possible, so um, they found a great place to get their voice heard and get, get it out, so. Thank you, Javi. Dave Kaiser, we'll, uh, we'll have you uh, pack everything up here in a final uh, report. Sure, just finish up with a couple other things that are happening around the organization. I did want to point out, we talk a lot about elections, but I did want to mention that through the Connection Program, we work very closely with all of the cities, getting information out to voters about how to vote and the processes that had changed because of COVID. So I just want to say that thanks to the cities for providing that information and Beth and Chris and the Connection Crew did a great job of helping people understand the voting process. You see the note about the ongoing Anoka Hennepin School District productions we're doing. We have worked with them on some productions for discipline through the elementary, middle school, and high school ages. We had 20 staff and faculty in our building to tape information on the green screen in front of the teleprompter, put that all together. So again, great to have an ongoing partner as big as the school district to work with now and down the road. Fall sports, as you can imagine, you probably heard, has been all over the place. We had a part one and part two of the season because of COVID. We had snow, as you see in the picture on the field many times. And now, today, we're having to hustle to turn things around because sports ends on Friday night. So everyone that had games coming up Saturday now has turned out to have games tonight and tomorrow night. And John and our crew have responded, so we'll have trucks out tonight covering volleyball and tomorrow night covering football to end up the fall season. Then we'll be on hold, it sounds like, for about a month 
and then get ready for the winter season, whatever that might look like. And finally, future sustainability. I just listed some of the other clients that we're working with. Again, working with the city of Maple Grove on note on their employee recognition video because they can't do their event in person. We're helping them put together a video. Had many of their department heads, council members in our studio. Seven Dreams Education Foundation working with them on a virtual gala as well. So some things that are being changed by COVID, we are responding and helping out with video. So we're happy to do that any instances that people see appropriate. All right, thank you for all the staff reports. Anything else, Mike? That's all I have, Madam Chair. Okay, so we just, uh, unless anybody's anything else, motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn, McDonald. Nora, second. Moved and seconded. Uh, Wendy, please the roll call. You're muted, Wendy. There we go. Dwayne Oren. I think he left. Dwayne. No, no, Dwayne's here. Dwayne, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're muted. muted. There we go. Yes. Camille Heppola. She may be gone. She's gone. Um, Ann Norris. Aye. Cheryl Weiler. Aye. Al Matson. Aye. Kirk McDonald. Yes. Bradley Grams. Aye. Helen Lefebvre. Aye. Marsha Glick. Aye. Joni Clausen. Aye. Daryl Sanis. Aye. Charlie Bros. Charlie. Uh, he may be. Oh, he's there. Charlie, Hi. can you hear us? I guess not. Uh, Mary LaHaye. Hi. Okay, thank you, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Thanksgiving and Christmas. We'll see you next year. Thank you so much. Everybody. Be